This is Plant-Based Briefing. What made people eat plant-based or go vegan in 2018 to 2021? Part 1 by Sandra Nomoto at sandranomoto.com. And I'm Marian Erickson, host of this plant-based podcast where I curate, get permission, and narrate a variety of articles on plant-based and vegan living every weekday in about 10 minutes or less. And today's article is a bit longer than that, so it's going to be a two-parter. I'll read part one today and then come back tomorrow for part two. It's by Sandra Nomoto. She's known as the Content Doctor. She's a content writer and editor for cruelty-free businesses. She also helps spiritual and vegan authors with editing and formatting services. At 25, she founded Conscious Public Relations, Inc., an award-winning public relations agency that focused on telling the stories of purpose-driven businesses. She authored The Only Public Relations Guide You'll Ever Need in 2019 and a marketing book for vegan businesses called Vegan Marketing Success Stories in the Fall of 2022. Sandra blogs on vegan lifestyle at sandranamoto.com and lives in East Vancouver, Canada with her husband. So now let's get to today's plant-based briefing. What made people eat plant-based or go vegan in 2018 to 2021? Part 1 by Sandra Namoto at sandranamoto.com. What makes people go vegan or the tactics that make people go vegan faster? After launching Vegan Marketing Success Stories, I've had many conversations about how vegan businesses market themselves to attract more vegan or non-vegan or omnivore consumers. If you're still wondering how we came to eat so many animals for food, hopefully my blog on the book Meat Hooked, linked here, answered that. When I came across this article from Faunalytics linked here a few months ago that reviewed a few studies it conducted in 2021, I realized what we should talk about more than how businesses market themselves are the methods that make people eat plant-based or go vegan. I did some research, and I could only find one other study from 2018 to back up this data. While it might not be the most current, the following studies provide some cool information or some of the most and least effective tactics that make people eat plant-based. My recommendations in this blog consolidate data from the following two studies. VOMAD's global study involving 12,814 participants from 97 different countries, conducted from October to December 2018, and Faunalytics' two studies. The first retrospective study involved 4,155 participants and many tools, and includes detailed data from those who identified as Black and Latinx. The second experimental study involved 2,405 participants and did not include documentaries, peer-to-peer influence, classroom lectures, challenges, books, or labels in the study. Please download the 111-page PDF report published in April 2022 titled Planting Seeds, the Impact of Diet and Different Animal Advocacy Tactics at the link above. Below, I've included a graphic summary of VOMAD's survey and the info comic from Karen Ginsberg that summarizes the data from the latter two studies. There's a lot of coding involved in the infographic, which is why I wanted to do my own deep dive on the topic. The responses to the VOMAD survey question, what was the first thing that made you seriously consider going vegan, even if it didn't make you go vegan yet, were as follows, in order of most popular to least popular. A feature-length documentary a conversation with a friend or family member, other, a video on the internet, other than a feature-length documentary, posts on social media, short clips, articles shared, images, comments, etc. I made the connection without any influence, I read some articles or blogs online, or a book. Highly recommended tactics. Number one, documentaries. In VOMAD's survey, this was by far the most successful tactic, at 21.9%. While Faunalytics cautioned against it, 56% of respondents in the first study who remembered watching a doc said it reduced their animal product consumption. Here are the answers to the VOMAD question, what was the name of the documentary that made you want to go vegan? Top response was, what the health, followed by cowspiracy, earthlings, other, and forks over knives. Number two, conversations with vegan friends or family members. This is great news. Just by being vegan and sharing that with your loved ones, you have a good chance you'll influence their behavior. In the five years I've lived as a vegan, one acquaintance said she eats almost no animal products except for bee products and convinced her friend to eat plant-based because of learning about my journey. One close friend has cut seafood from her diet thanks to the Seaspiracy documentary, and another close friend has cut meat from his diet and eats other animal products occasionally. So I can tell you anecdotally that even if you don't convince anyone to go vegan, I believe everyone's on their own journey, people will follow your lead if you're out and proud about it. 
16.8% of OMAD survey respondents listed conversations with friends or family members as influential. While there was not enough sufficient data to rate peer-to-peer outreach in phonolytic studies, 41% of new vegans from the first study self-reported that they received information about plant-based eating from a peer in the month prior to starting their vegan diet. VOMAD asked respondents what were the most effective ways to get people to go vegan in their opinion, and the top two responses, show them good food and initiate conversations, fall under this personal influence. Think about all the campus's Earthling Ed visits, where he has a table and a sign saying, Debate a Vegan, that invites outspoken non-vegans to come and talk on camera with him. Add the online shareability to those videos, and that's far more effective than an offline protest that depends on people paying attention, or worse, forces people to. Now, if you're thinking, I'll give my friends and family a long list of all the docs they should watch and books they should read and force conversations on them, let me stop you right there. I recently listened to this podcast episode of The Darren Olean Show with Tony Okamato linked here, and I agree with her point that a good vegan meal is way more effective in changing minds versus getting angry at people for not going vegan right away. Individuals and companies like Yon Fuchs and Dr. Melanie Joy of the Center for Effective Vegan Advocacy have focused their work on these one-on-one conversations, and I expect more to follow. My list of vegan resources linked here is already really long, but I created it because there's an in for everyone, if they're open to it. I almost always recommend Earthlings as the one doc to watch because it worked for me, and veganism is really about the animals. But depending on the angle your loved ones are coming from, health, climate, injustice, etc., there is a resource for nearly everything related to veganism. Here's a summary of the responses from the VOMAD survey to the question, in your opinion, what is the most effective way to influence or convince people to go vegan? Number one was show them good vegan food, then initiate conversations, get active on social media, get fit and or improve health as a vegan, promote vegan documentaries, books and videos, and other. Number three, social media posts. Phonolytics' first study reported that social media posts reduced animal product consumption in almost 40% of respondents who remembered experiencing them. 13.2% of participants in VOMAD survey listed social posts as the fourth most popular tactic. One of my colleagues at Veg Networking Canada said that seeing one social post convinced her to start the journey to veganism. This is why I always share informational content posted by other credible organizations or content creators, because you never know who might see it. Number four, online blogs or articles or newspaper articles. Phonolytics strongly recommends news articles as an effective tactic. Almost 40% of respondents in the first study remembered reading them before reducing animal product consumption. Their studies did not separate out online versus newspaper, so let's assume a good chunk of that was online. When only 1% in VOMAD survey listed newspaper articles, ninth most popular tactic, 4.4% mentioned online articles or blogs, the fifth most popular tactic. Below is the data from VOMAD survey on online articles. The question, on which website did you read this article or blog? And the answers were, I don't remember, other, personal blogger, PETA, non-vegan news platform, nutritionfacts.org, plant-based news, live kindly, and veg news. Number five, classroom education, talks, or events. A whopping 58% and 63% of participants in phonolytic studies who had experienced a classroom talk reported reduced animal product consumption. In VOMAD survey, 1.3% of respondents said they attended a speech, lecture, or event, the eighth most popular tactic. Gary Orofsky's powerful one-hour presentation at Georgia Tech University in 2010 comes to mind, as does James Wildman's talk on behalf of the Animal Rights Foundation in Florida in 2012, and Jamie Logan's more recent talk at Rutgers University, where she brought vegan pizza. Who says no to free food? All these talks are linked here. I would also say public events like our own Planted Expo in Vancouver, which typically host vegan speakers, are also very effective. Check out my calendar of global plant-based and vegan events linked here. We need to get more kid-level education in classrooms to get them aware early. I recently watched this Animal Justice online panel discussion on getting plant-based food into institutions, corporations, and cities, and highly recommend a watch as they cover how you can be part of getting groups of people and entire organizations to move more plant-based. You just listened to What Made People Eat Plant-Based or Go Vegan in 2018 to 2021, Part 1, by Sandra Nomoto at sandranomoto.com. And I'm your host, Marian Erickson, and tune in tomorrow for the second half of this article, where Sandra discusses the lesser recommended tactics from these surveys, as well as not recommended tactics. 
So please share this episode with anyone who might benefit and thanks for listening.